Assalamualaikum and welcome back to another lecture with Sir Sazwan. So we'll be looking at the next chapter in ELC 501, which is deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, and assumptions in arguments. So reasoning, uh, there are two different types of reasoning, as well as there are assumptions in argument. So we'll, we'll, we will be looking at the different uh, those two types of reasoning, what made up of them, how to do them, as well as how to identify assumptions in argument. So without uh, further ado, let's move into the lecture. Okay, learning outcomes. So by the end of this chapter, you should be able to identify arguments. What are arguments? So we will identify them. We will define what are arguments. Identify deductive reasoning in arguments. How you can find out which one is deductive, which one is inductive. Okay, identify deductive reasoning. As well as, as identify assumptions in arguments. So there are some clues and tips and tricks for you to uh, that for you, which will able to help help you understand which one is which and how you can use them in your own critical reading, uh, critical reading, right? So arguments. An argument consists of statements which form the premise or premises and a conclusion. So it, it is made up of two those two things. So an argument is made up of a premise or premises and then conclusion. So we'll be looking at what are premises and then what is the conclusion. So how do you identify statements? So you need to remember that statements and non-statements they are two very different things. So whatever you say, it can be a statement and then it can be a non-statement. So, for example, of a statement, so open burning during the dry season is the main cause of haze. So that is a statement. As well as the second one, it is difficult to identify the real culprit. So that is statement, something that you say, something that you inform others. So those are called statements. For non-statements, they are something that are not. Well, it's that it's really self-explanatory so it's not a statement for example the example here come here come here is a command it's not a statement okay and wow that's wonderful it's an exclamation you are shocked you are uh, surprised so that is an exclamation so remember not all sentences are statements you need to identify which one is which based on the sentence structure the uh, text okay uh, other examples can be you should exercise extreme caution when you deal with explosive in some countries drug related health offense offenses are punishable by death it's better to be late and uh, than never in the left part of the table those are statements whereas in the right part of the table those are non-statements which can be a greeting instruction proposal a question a request and suggestions so those try to remember whenever they have certain functions in uh, in that sentence whenever you want to do there is a certain function that you when you use that sentence you want to achieve something with that so it becomes a non-statement whenever you want to greet someone it is a non-statement good morning that is a non-statement so when you want to instruct someone, take the first turn on your right. That is not a statement. That is an instruction. <laughs> so you need to be able to identify premises. So what are premises? A premise is a statement which provides specific examples, reasons, cases, or other details that support, prove, or explain a conclusion. Okay. So premises may be introduced using uh, premise indicators when we talk about premise it means that something that you want to help explain uh, the conclusion okay the conclusion is what you can uh, like what we mentioned in the previous lecture the conclusion is something that you uh, talk after at the end of the uh, when you read something at the end when you come up with a conclusion based on the facts that have been given so when you want to come up with the facts you need to refer to the premises uh, to the the ideas which are called the premises all right so they are these are some of the indicators that you can use to identify whether it is a premise or not okay 
So for example, they have scenes for seeing that in view of, as indicated by, considering that, given that, judging from, because in as much as on account of, this is implied by, so those are, are premises, okay? Premises it indicators. Whenever you use this, or whenever you find this, you can, uh, you can directly say that, okay, this might be a premise, okay? So identifying conclusions. A conclusion is the main point of a passage or a text, okay? It's almost similar to the previous lecture. So it is a statement which is supported by premise or premises. Each uh, passage, they will always have one conclusion and will be uh, is made up of one or several premises. Okay. So conclusions may be introduced using conclusion indicators. Some of the conclusion indicators we can have is that accordingly, it follows that, means it or implies that, proves that, we may infer that, shows that, that is why or so. Consequently, as a result, therefore, thus, hence, suggests that, which shows that. So those are conclusion indicators. When you use this, you can, uh, this is very useful for when you want to talk about the conclusion or your main idea in the reading passage. Okay? Right. Let's look at an example so that you will be able to clearly understand what the uh, what what is a premise, what is a conclusion. So, my son is careless and responsible. He leaves his mobile phone everywhere. He has misplaced two phones in the past 11 months. Furthermore, I am still play, paying for the last phone he lost. Thus, I do not think my son should be given another phone. So, in example 1, the conclusion or the claim of the passage is the conclusion, I do not think my son should be given another new phone. So that is the main idea there of the passage. So you whatever you say before that, you are supporting what you uh, the idea in the passage. Okay. So the other sentences uh, uh, when we have read through, you know that the sentence support the conclusion. So when they are used to support the conclusion, they are called premises okay so the premises is that okay, my son is careless and responsible he leaves his mobile phone everywhere he has misplaced two phones in the last 11 months furthermore i am paying for the last phone that he lost so those can be called an argument this example can be called an argument because it has a conclusion which is supported by its premise for example this is uh, maybe you are trying to argue Maybe you are the husband and then you are the wife. So you want to argue that the son should not be given a phone. Why? Why the why the son should be given or should not be given uh, another phone? So whenever you want to do an argument like that, you need to have supports. So those supports are the premise. The premise talks about what what happens or what he does or what he she does or what she has done or she might have done. And then the consequences of what they have done. So that's why those premises are useful in supporting the conclusion. They are required when you are doing an argument. Okay. On the other hand, okay, this one is an example of not an argument. Okay. For example, I do not think that my son should be given another new phone because I am the father and I said so. So the conclusion is that. I do not think my son should be given another new phone. Okay, that's the conclusion there. But there is no given premise, alright? And the answer that they has been given because I am the father and I said so, that is not considered a premise. It's not supporting the premise because it feels like it doesn't give the, the, the reader about the situation that happens. Okay, it's just want to justify why. Okay, doesn't give the situation and then they, they didn't give any support to why they said that they shouldn't give a new phone. So that is why it's not called a premise. Okay, it doesn't support the claim. So this is an example of not an argument. So remember when you talk about arguments, it must be a support. There is, it must be made up of premises and conclusion. Okay. 
So how to identify deductive reasoning in arguments? Before we identify, we need to understand what is deductive reasoning. So there are two main types of reasoning, deductive and inductive. So in, the, in deductive reasoning, the argument starts from a general statement or rule, conclusion or claim, followed by the premises on which it is based. Okay? Let's look at it. A deductive argument asserts that the conclusion follows necessarily from the truth, truth of the premises. And then you need to remember that a deductive argument is valid or invalid so let's look at an example okay deductive reasoning is based on what the premise is there okay and likes all fish okay remember it ends like all fish so salmon is a fish okay so and likes salmon okay because the premise there is that when we talk about okay so the conclusion is and like salmon so the truth in the premise so maybe you can talk about the truth and likes all fish so that is true number one truth number one the premise number one okay and then salmon is a fish so it must be she likes salmon as well because she likes all fish any kind of fish salmon trout bass all those kinds of things so salmon is part of that family of fish okay so you can deduce that she likes salmon as well okay yeah, so that is what is deductive reasoning is about this one is another example in malaysia you must be 21 years old to vote and ahmad is malaysian okay he is 20 years old thus ahmad cannot vote so the deductive argument says the conclusion ahmad cannot vote so follows the truth from the premises in Malaysia, you must be 21 years old to vote. Ahmad is Malaysian. He is 20 years old. Let me try to explain this. So the conclusion is that he cannot vote. Okay, let's look at the premises. So you know, in Malaysia, you must be 21 years old to vote. Okay, that is true number one. That is the truth. Okay? Second one, Ahmad is Malaysian. Yes, it can be considered a truth. So that is considered, uh, there is a premise there. And then the third one. So, whenever you see the two premises, you might imagine that Ahmad can vote because you don't uh, didn't give the third one yet. Okay? So, when you give the third one, he is 20 years old. So, it is the truth as well. You can try to identify by looking at this IC or something, those kinds of things. And then, based on the rule, and then, even though he is Malaysian, but because he is not of the required age to vote he cannot vote thus you can deduce that he cannot vote because he is even though he is malaysian he is not at the right age so that is how you come up with deductive reasoning okay based on the uh, premises given right the truth of the premises okay it must be valid or invalid So inductive reasoning, on the other hand, the premise is to aim is the premises aim to establish or increase the possibility of its conclusion. Okay, a conclusion derived from inductive reasoning provides an argument which is considered to be strong or weak. So in inductive reasoning, it must be based directly on the truth. Okay, it's all the truth that has been given. Inductive reasoning only attempts to conclude from probability so it means that it can be the truth and it might not be the truth okay so let's look let's look at an example ahmad is tall his brother is tall his sister is tall his mother is tall everyone is uh, everyone in fact ahmad's family is tall 